Dork Lair. Welcome to another Dork Lair collecting video. Today I'm counting down my top 10 favorite action figures of 2019. And this is not going to be some kind of calculation or, um, you know, objective, quantifiable, uh, sort of accumulated points or scoring or anything like that. I'm not going to base my judgment on how fully articulated it is or on specifically how many paint applications or the value or anything. All those things kind of factor in. But in general, my criteria is which one figure would I want to keep in my collection? If I had to get rid of all the other figures that came out in 2019, which one would I want to keep and which two would I want to keep? And those would be my top two and so on down the line. Um, stay tuned at the end of the video. I am going to kind of share one more figure that I makes me really excited for 2020 in terms of um, a new line that I'm really excited about. All right, starting with these three right here. These are my runners up in my list. I was trying to narrow it down and really I came down to a list of top 13 basically. And so these are the three that I kind of said, okay, let me, let me see which ones I could eliminate um, from the top 10. Like these just didn't make the top 10, but these figures I love. These are, I'm so pumped to have these in my collection this year. They are some of the best figures, in my opinion, that came out in 2019. So um, starting right over here, we have the uh, homemade suit Spider-Man from the uh, Homecoming movie. And this is just an awesome figure. Got a good likeness. I just love the way the suit fits and everything fits really well. This is just an awesome Spider-Man figure from, from an awesome movie. So really great release right there. Uh, that one's probably not going to last too long. If you want to get your hands on one of those, like that one, I would try to get one of those pretty soon. And then, um, so then next up, this Luke came in a three pack from San Diego Comic-Con. It was like the journey of Luke or the legacy of Luke or something. And this is just an awesome version of, of Jedi Luke. So that one made my list. It's really nice to have that in the collection. And then finally, I can't even really move him around much because he won't fit into the <laughs> frame, but this massive beast is the um, Ice Troll from the Mythic Legion's Siege of Bjorngar wave. So love this guy. Really cool. Th this one's all about the paint applications and the sculpt and stuff. That head is just incredible. So those are basically my three runners up. Number 10 on my list is Mezco 112 Collective Dark Side. This figure is just really neat. It's got a lot of cool features. It's got some interesting materials. It's got this light up eyes. Um, it's got a really cool alternate head sculpt with the broken damaged face and this cape is really cool. Everything about this figure just is really nice to me. Um, I know a lot of people are sort of like, they think it's overpriced, but I, I think it's great. Just without even thinking about the price or anything else. This is a solid release. It's a really cool figure. And Number nine is Darsok, the half-orc mage from the Vitruvian Hacks line by Boss Fight Studios. This figure is incredible with so many accessories. It is just a loaded, loaded release. Um, I used to kind of be iffy about the $25 price point on these guys, but as I've been collecting these more this year, I think it's just totally worth the price point on these. And this figure is a value with all it comes with. So awesome figure. I'm looking forward to many more Vitruvian hacks in 2020. Um, so this one is number nine on my list. Number eight is the Mezco 112 Collective San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Jim Gordon with Bat Signal. And this is just a really cool play set. It's got a Bat Signal. Let's see if I can get him to turn it on here that comes with a light up feature. Uh, it's even got like a play feature. If you can see his hand in the back there, he's flipping the switch right there. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, this is just an awesome release. The Gordon figure is so detailed. I know it's on the lesser articulated Joker body, but awesome, awesome release. Just, I couldn't believe how blown away I was by, by this particular figure. There's a lot of Mesco on my list, by the way. Number seven is the Hyperreal Darth Vader. This figure really um, was one of my most anticipated and it definitely lived up to my expectations. It is a high quality piece. I know some people think it's overpriced at 80 bucks, but I definitely do not. I think this is incredible. Um, it's a nice, heavy, chunky figure. It's got this really cool body. 
Um, the metal skeleton has some great articulation, comes with a good set of hands. Um, I'm very much looking forward to Luke, and I hope they continue the line beyond that. But yeah, number seven, Hyper Real Darth Vader. At number six, we have the Stealth Gomez from New York Comic Con. Awesome release. Um, I could have picked any of the Gomez figures. I was actually kind of leaning towards the Lone Roach Samurai Gomez because of all the paint details and all the details on it. But I really love this white head on this body. And I kind of like the fact that this one's a little different. It doesn't come with the Chuck Taylors. It's got like the, um, it's got like the tactical boots on there. So this is an awesome figure in, um, I mean, this is a great body and suit to have customs and all that stuff. So yeah, of the Gomez's, this is my favorite Gomez, I think right now, uh, with a close second being Lone Roach. And um, yeah, so this is my number six. Number five is the Mythic Legion's Kurzog. This is the new Ogre Scale. Again, probably could have picked any of the Ogre Scale figures uh, for this one, but I think I do think Kurzog kind of edges the other ones out. Um, it's just an awesome figure, so super happy to have them. This probably would have been higher on my list if I didn't know about a lot of QC issues. I know there was a lot of breakage, um, and the joints were really tight on a lot of these. Mine were pretty good. Like I had to apply heat and stuff, but overall I got mine to work really well. Uh, so I didn't have any breakages, but I kind of feel like, you know, just because I knew about a lot of those issues and it seemed fairly common that, uh, you know, kind of bumped it down just a little bit, but I could have seen this easily in my top three, but yeah, number five is Kurzog. Number four, the SH figure arts Han Solo from the force awakens. Actually my most recent review on the channel and I sometimes end up undercompensating for very, very recently picked up figures when I'm trying to like rank them. So there's a good chance this could have been higher up had I gotten it earlier and had more time with it. But it's hard to say, like sometimes it takes time to realize how much you really love a figure. Um, but this is up there. This is number four. The likeness is just incredible. Get out there and grab this figure. It is unlike any other SH figure arts likeness. It is. It's on a level of its own, so Han Solo SH Figure Arts is number four. Number three is the Sovereign Knight Batman, particularly the Onyx, but really in general, all of the Sovereign Knight releases from the Mezco 112 Collective. I did pick this one just because it is so unique. It's so like on, it's so unlike anything else with that shine. I really love the look. It's got the nostalgia to, you know, sort of the Keaton kind of style to it as well. But yeah, I picked this one over the others just slightly. And really I could have put all four Sovereign Knight Batman on the list, but that would have been a really boring top 10 list. So kind of lumping all the Sovereign Knights in at number three and specifically the Onyx version. Number two is the Mondo 1-6 scale Skeletor figure. And this one totally took me by surprise this year. I was actually not even that big into Masters of the Universe until I started reading the mini comics on the recommendation of the Dork Lyric co-host Larry Waters, who um, suggested I start reading those. And because I had really never liked the cartoon that much, um, although now my appreciation for it is growing a little bit more. But uh, but yeah, like I just never was really that into He-Man. Um, and then once I started reading those comics, I started kind of like picking up some figures and I went with the um, the Mondo because I was able to find He-Man for really cheap. I found it for like a hundred bucks and then I got a deal on the Skeletor as well. And wow, this figure really is my favorite. I mean, it's it could have been my number one of the year. It is so good. I highly recommend this line. I know it's like kind of a little more premium than the rest of the figures on the list. Um, but again, I'm just purely basing this list on my love of these figures, like which ones are my favorites, which ones would I want to keep. And as you'll see, the number one is a figure that's not as expensive as this one. So it's not really about the price. This is about um, just really loving the figure. I love all the sculpting and the details, the weapons, all the accessories are incredibly detailed on this thing. Um, I mean, just take a look at that staff. It's just such a great release and I am collecting this line. Like I am going to be picking up as many of these ones as I can afford. Mondo 1-6 scale, Masters of the Universe in at number two. And last but not least, coming in at number one is the SH Figure Arts Yoda figure. This was an exclusive, so at some point this figure is going to become really hard to find, but at this point you can still get it for pretty cheap. 
awesome figure. It's really amazing how much articulation they put into this thing, how much, um, how many different swap out options and accessories. You can do action Yoda. You can do, you know, right here, sort of uh, wise Yoda. You can do sitting in the chair Yoda for the Jedi Council. There's so many different, you know, features on this little tiny guy that it's so much fun. It's just a really, really fun figure to have in the collection to set up in different ways. I actually kind of want a second one <laughs> because you can put them in a few different options again. Um, but yeah, so this is my favorite figure of the year. If I had to keep one figure in my collection and literally get rid of everything else from 2019, this would be the one that I would keep in the collection. So there you have it. So there's my top 10 list. Let me know what your top 10 list is in the uh, comments below. I'd love to see kind of where we overlap, where we agree, where we disagree. Um, lots of great figures in the year and I can't wait for all the figures that are going to be coming out in 2020. And there's one line that I want to mention that I am super excited for in 2020. And that is the uh, five points line. I've never been into like collecting retro style figures in the past. And this line um, has me super excited. The sculpt work, uh, just just the way the, they've approached this retro style with kind of respecting the action figure and really going, going, you know, really detailed with the sculpt work and paint is, um, is really cool to me. So looking forward to those Adams family figures, looking forward to eventually they're going to be putting out some Batman 66 figures. They're going to be putting out some other, um, DC stuff like the old Fleischer Superman, uh, some Hanna-Barbera stuff, but yep, this line is what I am pretty much most excited for, for next year. I'm also very excited for the, um, the Storm Collectibles, uh, Golden Axe stuff. Though that's a line that I'm, because uh, that's gonna be my first time collecting Storm figures, and I currently have uh, both of the releases on pre-order for those. So really looking forward to those in 2020. Uh, let me know what you're looking forward to in 2020. Thanks for watching my list. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, may the force be with you.